maybe Leeds were going to have a penalty oh, to make yeah, it. My heart, wow. Um, Gabby scared me, but yeah, it's never, it's never a penalty, not for me. So when I saw the video, I was more relaxed. It's a real shame for Patrick, isn't it? Because he actually made you look so much more threatening going forwards in the second half, but obviously couldn't stick away the penalty. He's had a, a rough year, Pat has, and um, there's nobody works harder. The strikers have these have these patches of form, and when when we got the second penalty, which which then wasn't, Pat was the first one, and he said, "No, I'm having it," and that's credit to him. Um, and um, that's the type of characters we need in the team, and, and we had that today. I think um, everyone to a man was was good, and it's just um, heartbreaking and and uh, absolutely got into to come away with nothing. I've asked them to focus on performance, to play with confidence, and to play with discipline in, t in terms of the way we want to play. And you see when we do that, that we can be a very good team. This is the best team in the league. I think they've been marching through the league pretty easily. And today we made it very difficult and showed that actually on the day we were better. The last four teams that have made the start you have have gone on to win the Premier League title. Is there something special happening at the moment? It's very special for us um, to, to have that level of consistency to win in many different contexts. Today was a very special context. After Thursday, after coming here, then there's no power, then delayed with the VAR decision, with the way we have to suffer the second half. I think this team deserves some credit. And you're glad they found the batteries for VAR, given what happened late on? Well, I think it turned out to be crucial. <laughs> it did. We got there in the end. Um, uh, they were under the pump for a lot of that game, were Arsenal. And Mikel Arteta also said after it had probably been their biggest test so far. So they do deserve a lot of credit for coming through that. Certainly they played with a lot of spirit, with a lot of grit, backs to the wall. Um, Leeds were magnificent, certainly in the second half, but the quality from Saka for his goal was... Uh, I mean, the kid is just fantastic. Mm. He's the most creative player that... Since Arteta's been there, everything seems to go through him. I know Jesus is the new story, but Saka just gets better. Udegaard loves that little slot in there, and Arsenal are trying to get it out. It's come from Rodrigo, which is a plus for Arsenal. And once he gets into there, it's just a little give and go, and he's waiting. He just pins the fullback, plays it in behind, and look at this for a finish. And I've seen him sky a few of these recently. So he certainly meant this. He's been practising it. That's that little area there for Udegaard. He does that every week. Little running off the ball, he's looking, he's just waiting and then puts the burners on and he settles himself nicely and just puts it into the roof of the net. So that's a top level finish and really that was the difference in the end because the second half was then a completely different game from the point of view of Leeds. It, it really did turn on the Patrick Banford coming off the bench. Well, go on, man. You've, well, you, you've, it, you, you've combined both your pieces of analysis in one perfect. answer. So, well, I just, I just think that he, if he could play every week, then Leeds would be certainly somewhat higher in the table. Mm, definitely. I just felt sorry for him today a little bit. Of course, I'm sitting there as an Arsenal former player hiding behind the sofa at times because it was that good. This was only a minute or so. He's come off the, pit, off the bench a minute or so in. You guys were all screaming because you're not Arsenal fans, but I knew he'd pushed him. And in the end, <laughs> you know, that was the case. But look how expertly they press. It's really brilliant the way they do this. Aronson there uh, feeding him uh, Bamford again. This comes back to him, and I just feel here he's got to hit this first time. Just nitpick him, but I think, look, you see the frustration with him, but he's a part of this press to get this ball back. And Arsenal was just playing into their hands a little bit. It's a ferocious atmosphere there. Again, I think he maybe could have hit that slightly earlier, but Ramsdale comes out brilliantly to smother the problem. I haven't seen anybody give these two central defenders this amount of problem. To be fair to him, again, look at that. Gabriel gets in the way and, and they clear up. And this one, great movement again. I wonder if Saliba there, a little tug on him. I wonder if maybe he should, could he go down? Perhaps if he, he had gone down, he'd have got a foul, wouldn't he? If he'd gone down, well, he'd off. Gabriel's yeah. off there at that point. I mean, he was sent off again, actually. Oh, that was Saliba at that time. But lovely little layoff again. And again, this is, look, that's Somerville coming off the bench should be putting that away. So it's the Leeds, but I mean, they're the sort of games, if you want to be champions or you want to challenge to be champions, you have to get points and, and get a win. And that was a brilliant result for Arsenal today. His, his, his stats, as we saw there, were fantastic for Patrick Bamford. And yeah, he had some chances and he, he missed the penalty as well. But because of the injuries he's had, I mean, you can see what's there. It's just about getting up to match speed, isn't it? He looks fit enough. I mean, it's confidence a lot of the times with strikers. They get a couple of goals and then they, they feel more comfortable. He, he just seemed to take too many touches at times, trying to get that perfect finish, whereas when you've been playing and you've got a bit of rhythm, you, you're getting shots off much more quickly. But 
Leeds have got to turn those good performances into some points sooner rather than later. Because uh, they did the same for uh, the majority of the game against Palace last week. Played with a good intensity, made some chances and ended up losing the game. D did you see a difference, re different resilience and fight in Arsenal? Quickly? It's been there all season, Chappers. When you go to Brentford and you win a game 3-0 comfortably, they've beaten Spurs and, and Liverpool recently at home. But this is one you go to. It's a young group. When you go to Ellen Road, I always found that a ferocious atmosphere to play in. Really, really difficult, certainly when they're playing into that main core fans as they were second half, and they stood up to that, and that was an outstanding result. Here in Philadelphia, and he, like us, have been watching these games on this Sunday, not just significant at Anfield, but all across the Premier League. Uh, as Shea was mentioning, 0-0 uh, at Old Trafford, another win for Chelsea. Uh, Aston Villa's four-game unbeaten run over at Villa Park. Arsenal, which we're going to show you in a second, nine wins out of their first ten games for the first time in their top flight history at Leeds, and 1-1 Southampton against West Ham. Well, it was eventful all day at Ellen Road. They started for 68 seconds. They had a 38-minute delay uh, because of the goal line technology power failure and the players had to come back out for a mini warm-up. Then we had a few VAR situations as here as, as well, Shay. Only after Saka had given Arsenal the lead with what was the match-winning goal in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's a good finish now. We talk about Mesley, the goalkeeper. Does he go down a bit early? But it's a... It's a real powerful strike, and from that distance, sometimes the goalkeeper's got very little chance to react. We can see it. We see this. I think it's the second half when there's a penalty given, and, and obviously Bamford steps up and, and, and pulls his penalty wide. So it's Leeds had the opportunity to get a draw at least out of the game, but you know it's a poor penalty from Bamford. Now, if that wasn't enough, Bamford thought here he had a, another opportunity. Gabriel was shown the red card. Penalty was awarded. Then the VAR had a look at this and rescinded it to a yellow card at an Arsenal free kick. It's been an eventful day, hasn't it? It has, yeah, lots of VAR decisions. Uh, referees have, have, you know, and sometimes it's not their fault, sometimes it's just one of those weekends where they get a few uh, decisions to make that might be tricky. Um, I probably think that was fair, it wasn't a real forceful, fl I did think he tried to sort of flick him um, with his foot, so it was probably fair, but yeah, Referees in the headlines this weekend. Some right, some wrong decisions, but overall it's been very entertaining. OK, let's see what the Arsenal manager thinks of it all. Here is Mikel Arteta. We were exceptional in many moments. I think we should have put the game um, 2 or 3 nil up. We didn't do that, and then the second half was a different story. Credit to Leeds, the way they came out in the second half, they created this problem. We made so many... Easy errors and giveaways in really dangerous areas that put us under trouble, and then we never generated any momentum, any control of the game. Very different to the to the first, but uh, I just love the the commitment, the the relentless and and the passion that the team played to somehow find a way to win again. It was a really unusual start to the delay with the suspension of the game. How do you feel your players cope with that? We had to adapt. Obviously, we are not used to that, and uh, it changed a little bit our routines. We tried to to do it the best possible way, but I think we started the game really well. Yeah, they had a few challenges today, and yet again, Arsenal have overcome them. And as I say, they've won nine of their first ten games for the first time in their top-flight history. What do you make of what Mikel Arteta has done and continued to doing, Rafa? I think they are doing well. Analyzing the games, not just watching the games, no, analyzing the games, they're doing a lot of things right. So they press high, uh, they have the possession, they move the ball very quickly, they have uh, light players, very dynamic up front, and as soon as they give the ball away, they press and they regain the ball uh, quickly. They have uh, good players in 1v1 situations, they play wall passes, so a lot of uh, good things, and the defenders are very high. He said that, and I was taking note of that. We made easy errors in dangerous areas. When you are doing well, when you have good players, you can take the risk, and the Bruin was talking about that before, you can take the risk in the last pass. They can do that because they are so quick when they go to press. They have uh, so much pace in attack, and they are now uh, mentally ready. It's like when Manchester City is doing well, and when Liverpool was doing well, they go and they press quickly, and because you are on top of the other team, you regain very high, and then you create more chances. So that is what they are doing now. A lot of teams, they play from the back. Because they are so quick regaining, the other team is wide, open, and then they create more chances and they score more goals. Is he an example? Money, uh, don't get me wrong, but and they were supporting him and he was doing well. And at the end of the day, they are, uh, the value of the, of the team, the players, the club is much better now.
Just one for me, Raf, on that. How big a decision last year? Obviously, you say he was coming under pressure. People were calling for his head or whatever. Obama Yang was a big decision. He was the captain. He was the leading goal scorer. But as a young manager, he made a big decision to, to get him out of the club. And now maybe he's, he's getting yeah. the rewards. I will tell you something because I know a little bit from inside. I think he was trying to support the player as much as he could. And after he couldn't, and that's it. And he has to make a decision. Are people talking about Arsenal enough? Four points clear, the reigning champions. Ten games in. Possibly after today, people will be thinking, hang on, four points is a nice little cushion. Um, you know, I, I cast my mind back to Leicester and it would, certainly wouldn't be a, a surprise like, like the Leicester season, but I do cast my mind back when everybody, you know, Leicester went four points clear and it's, oh, it's only Leicester, they won't win it and whatever. Arsenal got a lot more ability than, uh, than, than, than that team. Um, and I do think that if they continue like this for the next sort of, three, four, five games, if they continue winning, then all of a sudden people will be thinking, wow, you know, they are the real deal. They are the biggest um, thorn in the side of Manchester City, maybe. Um, and after today's game, Manchester City obviously not picking up three points, all of a sudden, it strengthens their grip at the top there. It's going to be a strange season, obviously, with the World Cup impeding on, on uh, you know, encroaching on it, let's say. But you know, stranger things than ha have happened and they're, they're looking good all of a sudden. Let me one second, because yeah. what you say, they have a young team mm. with the World Cup now, with the break, they will recover and they will have fresh legs for the second part of the, of the season. And if they have confidence, you say, if they win two or three games, I agree with you, so they will be there because they will have more belief and they still have energy to do it. You heard David saying on commentary, Arsenal's best ever Premier League start. Nine wins from 10, 27 points. Back-to-back 1-0 -back wins on the road this week as well after their win in the Europa League and Saka scored the goal there. That, that comes under the umbrella of grinding it out, doesn't it, Darren, that win? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it looked like they had a little bit of Europa League hangover, obviously playing a couple of days ago, but sometimes you're going to get tests and Ellen Road is a tough place to go. Hostile atmosphere. Probably Arsenal of last season would have lost this tie, but they managed dig in there obviously with the help of VAR and the referee but it's another three points and the players are playing well and again they'll, they'll take confidence because it was a different type of win we used to see in Arsenal the last couple of weeks free-flowing football today they have to dig in and grind out a result and they managed to do that yeah four goals for Saka this week because he scored in the week scored a couple against Liverpool and I think if what people are looking for is to add goals, isn't it, regularly yeah, to his game, which yeah. is pretty impressive as it there's, is. There's not a lot that he can't do, to be honest with you. He works really hard for the team, backwards, forwards, down the right-hand side. His left foot's genius, but this one's uh, on his right foot. And I'm thinking to myself, who's actually finished that? Mm. I, didn't, I didn't expect Saka to have this kind of finish on his right foot in his locker. And that has gone right. Mm. Keeper probably, but I just think the finish is great. Let's think of the positives. It's hit it so hard. It's almost so easy hard. to criticise the keeper, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, it is easy to criticise because it's on an angle. But he's in form. He's doing everything he needs to do. And he's ticking a lot of boxes, yeah. goals, assists, yeah. hard work. That's his spot now. That right-hand that right -hand side, his spot. Mikel Arteta admitted Arsenal were pretty good first half and pretty average second half, and they needed VAR to come to their rescue in the referee. Chris Wright, let's take this chronologically, because there's quite a lot in here. So, and it's all to do with Patrick Bamford. Right, first of all, he thinks he's equalised for 1-1. We, we, we may, there may be some discrepancy in the studio about this decision. Yeah, he does think he's, he's equalised for 1-1, but the whistle has clearly gone before the, the ball goes in the net. And he actually points at his chest and says, I didn't handball it. But when we, when we look at this, um, we can quite clearly see there's a foul. Darren will disagree with me, he doesn't yeah. think it's much of a foul. But he actually does foul the Has Arsenal he not defender. just eased the defender yeah. out of the way with eased a him. good and clever use of body weight? Eased him out? No. No. That's, that's what it is, Pook. It's clever from Gabriel because he's gone up too early. He knows he can't win the header. He's felt a little bit of contact on his back. Like, no, he's, I can't win it. I mean, it's not even a push, is it? I mean, anywhere on the else on the pitch, that's not a you foul. See, they play see, on. Yeah. I, I, th I think it's a foul. And I'll tell you why I think it's a foul, because if you see it again, you can see that um, Bamford kind of, he, he puts all his, all his weight on his back foot and leans forward. He puts all his weight on his back foot and pushes him forward. It's an unnatural way to get control of the ball. Watch his, watch his weight, he puts all his weight on, when it's in the, on the back foot and look, lunges forward. Bit of a lunge, 
There's nothing. Listen, don't you get You should me be wrong. a detective. <laughs> you know, you're how wasted many, here. How, how many times, though, does the ball go up to centre forward and the centre half does the exact same thing? Yeah. Knees yeah. on his back, yeah. heads it. Yeah. All the nothing. time. All and the time. No foul. I used yeah. to love it. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing <laughs> is. <laughs> I used to love doing that. <laughs> no foul, Chris, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> the thing is, as well, it, it's being checked. And yeah. is it clearly and obviously wrong? Well, it isn't no. clearly and obviously no. wrong. And that's why the decision is okay. good. Okay. Okay, penalty next. Clear handball, really good VAR. Uh, Chris Kavanagh can't quite see it, can he? Because it's the blind side of him. And you can see as the ball drops, it's... the Leeds player's actually obscuring his view. But it's clearly handball. This is exactly why VAR was brought in, wasn't it? The referee doesn't see it. The assistant referee doesn't see it. Very cute. Yeah. Just controls it, brings it down. <laughs> he sort of, he's slightly <laughs> panicked, Saliba, doesn't he? He goes, yeah. oh, it's about to hit my hand. Oh, it's hit my hand. Absolutely. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's going to... I don't think... It... I don't think it's going to be a problem for them, is it? If he doesn't, if he moves his hand, it's going to just roll through yes, to the keeper. Yeah, yeah. I think you're yeah. right. I think he panics. Not a great penalty, I'm afraid. Dragged it, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I think as a golden rule for any penalty, I don't, if you miss the target, I think that's not acceptable. I mean, Correct. if he saves it, fair play, you've made the keeper work. But missing the target is letting them off because if the keeper saves it, someone might tap the rebound in. But when yeah. you completely miss the target, Yes, that's it. unacceptable. You know, a lot, a lot of the time, because uh, Ramsdale's playing so well, it does sow a seed in the penalty taker's yeah. mind that he's actually in form, so I have to put this... A little bit more. Right oh, he's going for postage yeah, yeah, yeah. stamp, isn't he? I have he? to put this yes. even further in the corner because yeah. I'm taking a yeah. penalty against a goalkeeper that's on fire, so you're trying harder to yeah. put it in the corner. And as we've said, because he's left-footed, his shot is always going to go away Drags from away, the post, yeah. away Absolutely, from yes. the goal. So you have a cook that. So Arsenal thought they pretty much got there in deep into stoppage time. <laughs> right, talk us through the sequence here. <laughs> OK, so what we've got is uh, Patrick Bamford, I think it's Gabriel, isn't yes. it? And uh, there's a collision and you see there's a flick out by, by Gabriel. There's obviously communication from the assistant referee to Chris Cavana, the referee who's not seen it. He sees that, well, he's been informed that he's, he's kicked out in a violent way and uh, he gets a red card and a penalty kick. Now, we know with, with a red card, it's automatically checked. But you can see that the, the instigator in this situation is Bamford because he clearly pushes the Arsenal player over. So he go, obviously goes to the monitor and, and changes his decision. Now, the question is, why a yellow card? Well, he gets a yellow card for, I would describe as reckless play for the way he's flicked out. And we've gone from a penalty and a red to a defensive free kick and a yellow. Probably the biggest difference in VAR sure. we've had this season. But it's the right call. Yeah. I think that is the right call, isn't it? I, I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad kind of Chris summed up the yellow because I thought, OK, no red. I didn't even see a yellow card incident in there, but the fact that it's not a red card, I think that is the right decision. Yeah. yeah Bam I, Bamford clearly barges into Gabriel there, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing in it really, is there? Uh, yeah, I think Look Bamford there. does. Gabriel knows what he's doing. Yes. He, he goes into his in running line. Yeah. Bamford nudges him over. Gabriel's thinking, well, I can't let you get away with that. Studs are showing, let's have a bit of this. Chris, if, if Gabriel's booked for that, why is Bamford not booked for this? Because he's much to do as, as Gabriel. He's shoved him, he's got involved in the... Because he probably the referee just felt that it was just a clear push where that was more reckless play, the fact he's flicked out. Okay. So no, no push, no yellow card for the push? No. OK. Did you see Gabriel going, well done, ref, well done. <laughs> <laughs> he was delighted. <laughs> That's never happened That's to never me. That's never happened. <laughs> uh, are Arsenal genuine title contenders? Yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's hurt me to say it. 